Thanks for listening to the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast, where each week we talk about a free piece or two of technology that you can use in your classroom. I'm your host, Shanna Martin. I'm a middle school teacher, technology, and instructional coach from my district. And I'm her producer and the guy who uses problem solving and critical thinking skills each week in order to <laughs> make this podcast go onto the internet. Fuzz Martin. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that you use your critical thinking skills on a regular basis. I do. Basis. I have learned from the show <laughs> and from being married to a teacher. <laughs> that I need to use problem solving and critical thinking skills <laughs> in my day. So important. Yes. They are so important. They are, really. And here we are. We're using that to teach people today about Tinker. Tinker with a Y. Tinker with a Y. T Y N K E R. Dot com. Dot com. So last week, um, happy. Related. Computer science teacher week. Yes. So I'm always, I always feel like I'm always off. I get all the emails, but it's happy computer science education week. It's December 6th or the 12th. Mm, last week. But, or it could be in the future, depending mm-hmm. on when you're listening to this. So maybe I'm not late on the happy computer science week. I could be really early. You could be, yes. You can listen to this at any time, yeah. So, so if, if you're listening, in you the can future, celebrate Computer Science Week whenever you want to, whether right. it's before or after the official week. It's fine. There's a chance you found this episode <laughs> a year from now. a year from now, and on on the internet, and <laughs> we're right on time. Episode 106, folks. Wow, 106. Yeah. Nice. We talk about coding every once in a while on here. I mean, we the whole goal is always free resources, mm-hmm. and I. While I do teach social studies, um, every once in a while it gets mentioned, I teach social studies and I teach reading and I teach robotics and I coach the staff. So, you know, I do a few things here and there. And one of my favorite things to teach is coding. I do teach an enrichment robotics class and coding is a large part of it. And in our district, we kind of start the kids at coding, usually fifth, sixth grade, and it goes up through high school. We have like competitive robotics team and stuff. And it's a very small district. So there's like, you know, six kids on the team. But what I have noticed is after teaching coding over the years, they've definitely improved coding for kids. So there are things we'll talk about today that the six-year-old in our house can definitely code all the way through challenging things that push those high schoolers that really want to get into coding for their future. So with Computer Science Week, it also always comes up with Hour of Code because Hour of Code comes up throughout the year. And Tinker, the site we're talking about this week, has a lot to offer both teachers and students. So I kind of wanted to highlight, you can encourage, if you have students that really love to code Mm -hmm. and they want to do more on their own, but you don't want to set up a teacher account, you don't have to. They can sign up as a student in Tinker And they have access to the coding puzzles and stuff. And they get up to 20 hours of free coding. And then as a teacher, you can sign up and you get like 40 hours and you can create a class. And then you can assign specific coding challenges to your students, depending on what you'd like to share with them. Um, And the teacher features also have lesson plans and things like that. So the link that I'm putting into the website, smartwi.com this week, is the one that goes directly to coding. Mm -hmm. Tinker offers a lot of stuff for computer science teachers, but I wanted to focus on the coding portion this week. So the link that I'm going to drop in will take you right to the coding dashboard instead of just the site itself. So that way you don't have to dig around and find things. You don't have to tinker around? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, 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 You don't have to tinker tinker with the site. (laughs) We're doing good. So (laughs) the link um, will take you right to the coding section. And what's amazing about this, like I said, you can start with students that have never coded before ever. And they have the really fun activities. And what I appreciate about this is they give you, um, if you sign up for like that free teacher account and you look at it, you can see they give you the breakdown. So like this is beginner level coding is geared towards K4 students. It'll take them about 30 minutes in class. Teacher note, this is what the kids are going to do. This is what kind of problem solving they do, what kind of programming concepts they're going to look at. And then they also have a teacher guide with like a solution if you are unfamiliar with coding yourself. 
And then each thing unlocks. So a student has to pass each little bubble across the top of the screen and it tracks mm -hmm. how far they get. So even if kids want to just jump in and practice coding and you, you know, it's not going to be an assignment. You just want to engage them and have them test the stuff out. They can show you. I have my students jump in randomly sometimes like, Hey, it's like spend an hour coding something. Not even an hour. It's like 20 minutes and see how far you get, how, how many levels you can get unlocked. And we just talk about the problems they solve, the vocabulary they used it's quick. It doesn't have to be a formal sit down lesson kind of deal. But what they've added in, which is really cool, is it's not just, I don't know, they've made it fun. It's not yeah. just like robots moving things around or not shapes. Like they've got Barbie pet vet. So that's what I'm playing currently. <laughs> <laughs> they like to, it's block coding and it literally walks you through like how to block code. And you're like, the puppy needs a bone and the dog's walking. You get to pick your vet, you know, mm -hmm. and and they have uh, like Space Quest, Puppy Adventure. They have Dragon Blast. And again, it even starts, Dragon Blast is teaches block coding with ages, or sorry, grades like three plus. So certain things will start. It's not just a, um, it doesn't lock you in. Like it's grade three plus for that one. There's another one that's like uh, Code Commander is like six plus. So even if you have older students, they can engage in a lot of these, um, which is cool. And as you go down, so I'm just like on the dashboard, they even have a Hot Wheels obstacle course. I'm surprised you're not in that one. Oh, I didn't see that. You need to scroll down a little oh, further. <laughs> sorry. Um, okay, so the, so this is the best game ever. <laughs> um, but what's also cool is they have block coding. All grades. But if you're in the like going in across your like little teacher dashboard, if you've signed up, you have the option then you can choose tech coding, um, straight arcade, and then different things like the UN's put together versus NASA has their own section now. There used to be a couple of just space related things, but they have like Martian Weather Station, Earth is Art. And what's cool is there's different activities. So they're not all just straight coding. Some of them are showing you different ways of designing like web pages or there's different they have like python they don't it's not all block coding they also have um, like html they have javascript so like the higher levels the further you scroll down you'll see like draw landscape so there's not just it's not just like step by step always like there's different mm -hmm. designs they can do they can make masks for um like superheroes they can mask over stuff they can do it for minecraft um, there's just so many different options and ways that you can build this in. And then some of them too, like the tell a joke program, you can, that one has a voiceover. So for okay. the littles that can't read yet, they even have options to kind of get them coding without as a teacher, you having to read them directions all the time. So that way it can still be self paced, which is cool. They also have a bill of rights where you can program a quiz about the bill of rights. So that's more of an advanced level where it's teaching them it's a STEM project and then it incorporates social studies and understanding the Bill of Rights and coding all in the same area, which is really cool. So they have all different content areas too. So you could actually build coding into other content besides just like coding or science class. You can put it into math class and you can build it around different projects and stuff you're already doing in your classroom, which is really cool. Hmm. They also have a new section, which is arcade where it teaches you how to program video games. Okay. So students can go in, like one of them, they have Retro Racer or Outlast, the Onslaught, or Platform Peril. And what you do is it gives you like a like a game, I don't know, like a console a screen, yeah, I guess. Okay. And then across the bottom, it gives you like power-ups. Or if your little guy is like, fall into this volcano pit, this will happen. And it gives you all of the tools across the bottom with a pre-done screen. Yep. And then you drop the different like challenges in for the characters and then you hit play and then you see how it plays out on your screen. Oh, that's cool. So it teaches you like the basics of video game design mm -hmm. without having to have a lot of background knowledge and without having to have a ton of coding experience. It teaches you how to do it step by step, which is pretty sweet. That's cool. Yeah. I so there's, yeah. Students would like that a lot because it's, you know, something that they're into 
outside mm-hmm. of school and it also teaches them <laughs> at the same time that they're playing. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's kind of cool because there's just a lot to offer. And while I've had my students do a lot of drag and drop block coding or like scratch or things like that, yeah. there's just more options that are in there now to challenge some of those kids that have done several of these things already, right. which yeah. is awesome. Yeah. It's like you can teach them Python and JavaScript mm-hmm. and HTML and CSS mm-hmm. and, um, this other one, P5, JS, <laughs> whatever that is. Um, I'm not familiar with that one, but that's pretty neat. Yeah. And then, again, they have, like, updates. So there's a weekly project. So not only is there, like, hour of code stuff and coding, then there's also, like, pre-done lesson plans and projects where you can build those or assign those into your classroom as well. And it gives you, like, a video with directions and how to set kids up and how do you assign it to your class if you want to do that. Um, so it's not just like free form coding. If you want to put it in as a lesson, you can. And then they also have like a forum for teachers to discuss what they're doing. And then of course their hour of code programs, which is the link I'm going to put in there because anybody can access that to encourage students to code, which is really cool. So there's like free form coding and then there's also specific projects and then STEM specific projects, which is very cool. And there's a lot of different um, activities that students can do and it totally draws them in. I have eighth graders who are like, yeah, I've done this one before. I'm totally doing it again. Like I want to do it faster this time or I want to try these different changes to it or that kind of thing. So, sure. yeah. So it's really kind of cool. That is kind of cool. I, um, the text coding piece for those, uh, maybe a little bit older students is really, it's a really kind of cool setup that they have. So you can, like I said, learn JavaScript and things like that. But the the way they've got the coder set up is pretty interesting. And I know it's not part of the, uh, that kind of hour of code, a little blocks that we're talking about, but the, I, I think it's something that, that this is a really good resource. And, it, and you can introduce coding with, it's low pressure. Right. It's not like we got to sit down. And for those kids that need to be challenged, there mm-hmm. are challenging programs yeah. for them. Mm-hmm. And those that are like, I don't need to do this. I will never code my life. But that's because it's teaching you yeah. problem-solving skills. Oh, yes. Without. And critical thinking. And critical thinking. <laughs> <laughs> For kids age 5 to 18. There you go. Mm-hmm. See? So tinker.com. Um, again, specifically, I'll link you guys to the Hour of Code piece. But there are so many cool things you can just sign up. And with the free account, that it offers a lot more than it used to. Which is pretty sweet. That is pretty sweet. By the way, I couldn't play Hot Wheels because I spent all of my credits playing Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> that is one thing. Yeah. You need kids to sign up, even though it's a free account. You have to have them sign up so that way they get more. Because yeah. if they're just playing around, you only get so many credits and then it locks you out. Right. So that's, that's actually a good at. thing to point out. Like They need to create their own free student account, mm-hmm. or you as a teacher need to create a free teacher account. So that way they have longer time to... Tinker. Tinker. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. By the way, um, total side topic, but I want to say <laughs> congratulations to you because a couple weeks ago you were number 40. This podcast was number 43 on Apple's How To Podcasts top well, charts. That's fun. Yeah. Look at you check, checking the data. Yeah. So, well, me, thanks. thanks to everybody for listening, for making it happen. Yeah. We're number 43. We were number 43. We're not on the chart right now, but <laughs> we were number 43. Thanks to you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So share with your friends. Mm-hmm. Free resources. <laughs> thanks for tuning in. This has been the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast. If you ever have any questions, you can find me on Twitter at SmartNWI. And if you want to get more information on the links to the technology discussed in this episode, you can visit SmartNWI.com. If, you have, if you'd like to support the show, please consider buying me a coffee or two. You can visit buymeacoffee.com slash smartnwi or visit smartnwi.com and click on the cute little purple coffee cup in the corner. Your donations help keep this show going. New episodes each week. Thanks for listening. Go educate and innovate. The ideas and opinions expressed on this podcast and the tech uh, and the Smart and WI website are those of the author Shanna Martin and not of her employer. Prior to using any of the technologies discussed on this podcast, please consult with your employer regulations. This podcast offers no guarantee that these tools will work for you as described, but we sure hope they do. And we'll talk to you next time on the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast. Mm-hmm.